Snow Wars 7x7 episode 2692. It's a big day today. It's the day of the release of the final book in the new Thrawn trilogy, the prequel Thrawn trilogy, if you will. It is Star Wars colon Thrawn Ascendancy colon Lesser Evil. And today, a non-spoiler review. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review, but it's also probably going to be a bit of a confessional and a you know, reflection possibly on the best way to read the Thrawn novels. I don't know, it just, it probably has to start from the fact that I should disclose at the outset that I'm not necessarily the biggest Thrawn fan. I am a Thrawn fan of the Thrawn that appears in Star Wars Rebels, and in particular the reason I say that is because that Thrawn is a villain who needs to be overcome. He's a very smart villain, a very savvy villain, a very worthy villain for our heroes to try to you know, figure out how to deal with and defeat, which is not the case <laughs> with the six Thrawn novels that we've gotten since the rebooting of the canon. That first Thrawn trilogy with just Thrawn and Thrawn alliances and Thrawn treason, and now with the Thrawn ascendancy novels. And so, yes, if you want to go back that far, I was more of a fan of the Thrawn in the Heir to the Empire trilogy than I am in the Thrawn of these novels. And that's okay, that's just personal preference. That's not a knock on anyone who likes, enjoys, prefers even this particular Thrawn you know, Thrawn as the protagonist, basically. So I just feel like I need to make that particular <laughs> lens clear for you before I continue. So let's frame things a little bit. From the publisher's summary, they talk about how the Chiss ascendancy uh, stability has been eroded by a cunning foe who winnows away trust and loyalty in equal measure, ooh ah. Bonds of fidelity have given way to lines of division among the families, the big nine ruling families. Uh, that's what we're primarily concerned with. And despite the efforts of the expansionary defense fleet, the ascendancy slips closer and closer to civil war. It goes on to say the Chiss are no strangers to war and that their mythic status in the chaos was earned through conflict and terrible deeds some long buried until now, dun dun dun. To ensure the Ascendancy's future, Thrawn delves deep into the past, uncovering the dark secrets surrounding the ascension of the first ruling family. But the truth of a family's legacy is only as strong as the legend that supports it, even if that legend turns out to be a lie. And thus, to secure the salvation of the Ascendancy, is Thrawn willing to sacrifice everything, including the only home he has ever known. And in a sense, you kind of already know the answer to this, because the previous Thrawn trilogy showed how he was in exile and then picked up by the Empire and all that, but you don't necessarily know how that happened, how it came to be. Similar to how we have the original trilogy and we know that the Galactic Empire is in place, but we don't know how it happened. We don't know how Anakin falls to the dark side. And so the prequel trilogy tells the story of how Anakin fell and how the Republic fell with it. In a similar fashion, this trilogy is basically about how Thrawn fell from grace and ended up in exile. And we may be skating into some spoilery-ish territory, but, uh, you know, ticket that is fair warning, I guess. Um, for many years, and in both of these trilogies, Thrawn has been depicted as a genius in the military sector and clueless in the political sector. And ultimately, one of the problems I've had with the Thrawn novels is that that political cluelessness has never come back to bite him. It's made people mad at him, but his military success has always paved over any of that, and he's been able to continue on his upward trajectory. Well, finally in this novel, that isn't the case. Although there manages to be a twist on it after all, so uh, yeah, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about it, but it was finally nice to see some consequences to this political cluelessness. I'll also say, having read now half a dozen Thrawn novels, that working through the nine ruling families and the caste systems within those families and how that affects things and the different rankings that you encounter militarily in the expansionary defense fleet, that gets easier the more Thrawn novels that you've read. 
And that leads me to think about the supporting cast for Lesser Evil, many of whom are back from Greater Good and with a couple of new notable additions as well. So I have to say, the strength of the supporting cast in that middle novel, Greater Good, was really the thing that I appreciated most about that novel. Like, that's the thing that really recommended it for me. And that's also the case here with Lesser Evil as well. And the story itself definitely feels much tighter and much more streamlined. And the book is actually like one of the longest books in the current Star Wars canon. It picks up kind of right after the events of Lesser Evil. And there's a part of me that wonders, especially considering that these two novels were released in the same year, Greater Good and Lesser Evil, if <laughs> there wasn't a point at which you could have decided, oh, let's end Lesser Evil at this point instead of that point, and whether some of the material in Lesser Evil could have actually been the ending of Greater Good. But you kind of need the first chapters of Lesser Evil to bring you back up to speed on the events of Greater Good and where you stand in the whole thing. So, eh, you know, maybe the cutoff point was right after all. And the plot itself is as twisty as you might expect it. That mysterious Jixtus character that we met in the previous parts of the trilogy, well, you get to find out more about that character and what that character's real deal is. It is pretty much what you might have suspected already, but that's okay. And even though in interviews Timothy Zahn has been saying, I think I've you know filled in pretty much everything about Thrawn that I'm going to, I'm kind of treading in water, or treading water I think is how he put it in a Polygon interview. You know, it sets up something really remarkable, I feel like, and I feel like his first Thrawn novel or first Thrawn trilogy actually set up the potential for some amazing villainry to come that would hopefully not just be faced by the Empire but by the good guys also. And we get some foundational stuff for that here, perhaps maybe not as satisfyingly as you would have wanted. It's just like, it's just enough where you're like, ooh, 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 but yeah, it doesn't really dig in necessarily as deep as you might hope it would. But I might be quibbling on small details. The broad overview fact of the matter is that even for it being one of the longest, if not the longest books in the new canon, it's a very smooth read. It pulls the threads of the story together Together, it leads to a satisfying conclusion that sets up what that first Thrawn trilogy is all about and does so in a very unique and surprising way. It does a great job wrapping up the stories of supporting cast members and yeah, if you like Thrawn being a very Sherlock Holmesy kind of person, then you will definitely enjoy this. I will say that as far as his Sherlock Holmesy attitude goes, this particular one felt a little more accessible comparatively speaking. Sometimes you read Thrawn novels and you're like, how the heck did he arrive at that? And then the explanation comes and you're like, how the heck did he arrive at that? <laughs> this one felt a little bit less so. This one felt a little more accessible, like there were actually moments where you as a reader could grab onto it and the logical conclusion jumps were not so inaccessible. I mean, heck, despite all of my <laughs> disclosures and disclaimers and whatnot, this might actually have been, for me, one of the most enjoyable Thrawn novels to read. So. There you go. That's what I've got for you today on the show. And so it just remains for me and the studio manager, Indy, here to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the podcast, as always, and may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.